So if you've been trying to figure out which airbrush to buy, in this video, I'm gonna help you do just that. Let's get into it right now. So one of the first things you gotta figure out when wanting to buy an airbrush is what you wanna do with it. Do you wanna airbrush miniatures like this? Do you wanna do more of your general canvas artwork like this? Or are you looking to do more detailed artwork like this, cassowary? Or even images like this eye, which is on synthetic paper, or just some basic texturing like the wood grain. You may also wanna do automotive work like this. Or perhaps you want to do RC cars, large scale murals, cake decorating, body painting, special effects makeup, or t-shirts. To name just a few, there's many more applications that you can use the airbrush for. But once you've figured that out, that's going to help to identify what type of airbrush is right for you. The next thing you need to decide on is are you happy to use a single action airbrush or as more commonly used, a double action airbrush. Single action essentially means that when you press down, you'll get air and paint at the same time and you just adjust it using a dial. Whereas a double action airbrush, and I've just got some reducer in here, you press down for air. So you can see just air, nothing's coming out and then you pull back and you get paint. So that's a double action. Press down for air, pull back for paint. Single action, you're gonna get both air and paint at the same time, so essentially like that. So once you've made a decision on single or double action, then you need to decide on gravity versus siphon. This one here, the CMSB Micron, you can see it's got the side cup, the TRN1 Neo, the GSI Creos PS770, and the cheaper model are all gravity feed. And what gravity means is that you put your paint through there and the natural flow of gravity allows that paint to flow down and then the air pushes the paint through the fluid nozzle and out the air cap and onto your work. Whereas a siphon feed, you're gonna have the jar sitting underneath and it needs to suck up the paint and dispel it out the front of the airbrush. My personal preference is for gravity because of the work that I do. And that's why the first question was, what do you intend to do with the airbrush? So you can go for a cheaper airbrush like this, pretty much the ones that you most commonly see on Amazon and eBay. And sure, you're going to be able to paint with it, but it's not going to be creating the same sort of detail as something that is branded and properly made. The time when I would recommend something like this, if you've been doing everything with a paintbrush and you just wanna try and see what airbrushing will do for you and you don't have a great deal of money to dedicate to it at this point in time, then grab one of these, give it a go and see if you at least like airbrushing before you set yourself up with all this expensive gear and you can always then upgrade at a later date. What I would recommend as a great beginner brush is actually two different brands and that is the Awada HPCS Eclipse. This one runs a 0.35mm needle nozzle setup and the GSI Creos PS289 which runs a 0.3mm setup. Both are very comparable in performance. You can see you can get nice detail out of it, no problem at all. Good coverage and then same goes for the Eclipse. They're both really nice brushes, super smooth. And either one of these is gonna definitely last you throughout your airbrushing journey. If you wanna go ahead and spend more money again, then something like the GSI Creos PS770 and the CMC Plus Micron are both great choices. The Micron is extremely expensive, but super smooth as you'd expect. And the Creos is actually very close to the Micron in terms of performance and it's a little bit more reasonable on price. So definitely go check these out. I'll pop links in the description to all the brushes that I feature in this video. The other thing that you may wish to go for is something like the Trigger brush. So this one is the Awada Neo TRN1. And you can see with the Trigger, you pull back to there, there's nothing coming out, and then pull back a little bit further for paint. And you can see it's like a mini spray gun essentially you get a little bit of extra coverage, but performs like an airbrush and is perfect for those who have come from spray painting 
and are much more familiar and comfortable with that trigger action. So I think those are a few key points that you need to keep in mind when purchasing your airbrush. You obviously got to decide whether you want double action or single action, siphon or gravity, what feels comfortable in your hand, the price point that you wish to spend. And I would actually recommend that you spend as much as you possibly can on the airbrush. Even if that means you spend a little bit less on a compressor, you can go to a regular hardware store and pick one up relatively cheap as long as you have a moisture trap and regulator fitted generally the hardware store compressors come with one fitted I would have another line going towards the bench with another moisture trap and regulator closest to where you're airbrushing just to stop any of that moisture contaminating your airbrush line but that way if you spend less on the compressor you can spend a little bit more and get a better quality airbrush as I said if you think that airbrushing may or may not be for you well then a cheaper option may be the best bet to start with and then you can always upgrade from there but one thing that you need to keep in mind with all the cheaper airbrushes is they don't last as long the parts aren't machined very well and also it's a bit of a hit and miss when you purchase them so sometimes out of the box they'll work sometimes they won't and if you don't have a lot of experience it could potentially put you off airbrushing entirely if you are looking for another budget option there is also the Sparmax brand that is really good. They're now owned by Awada. You could also go the Awada Neo HPCN. We used to run them in our classes and they were fantastic. Another airbrush that I used when I started was the Pash or Pache VL. I know there's many, many models that are out now, so I'm not up to date with all of the others, but I remember that being a very, very solid airbrush and it could definitely do everything that you need it to do and it's a great brush. That one is is a siphon feed so keep that in mind and if you have any specific questions regarding which airbrush to buy then leave that in the comments below again the brands that I've mentioned here are just the brands that I am familiar with and that I use day to day there are loads of other quality airbrush brands that I haven't mentioned so just because I haven't mentioned them doesn't mean they're not good it's just that they're the ones that I'm familiar with and that's what I'm comfortable with recommending so now that you know which airbrush you want to go ahead and buy be sure to check out some of the other videos videos and playlists that I've got listed here and until next time and when you do get your airbrush create some amazing artwork and I'll see you again very very soon in the next video thanks for watching bye for now